What's up catfish fans? Welcome back to the channel. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make little tiny rockets out of paper mache and toilet paper rolls. Nah, I'm just kidding. Let's go fishing. Oh, we got a big one. What's up catfish fans? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, man, I have spent the last couple of days and even the last couple of weeks trying, or last couple of weekends trying to get a good video to put out and it's been just one thing after the other just constantly. If you follow me on Facebook, you'll see that um, over the last couple of days, I actually took off work on Friday, so I've been trying to shoot a video. It's Sunday here now, but uh, I've been trying to get a video Friday, Saturday, which the weather kind of messed me up for Friday, and we wound up shooting a podcast episode. If y'all haven't listened to that yet, I'd appreciate it. Uh, KDK Fishing on Spotify, you can go over, and uh, I've got a new episode of the podcast up. Actually, the first episode of the podcast is up now. Uh, I'd appreciate it if y'all went over and checked that out, maybe give me a follow on Spotify. But uh, anyway, like I was saying, if you follow me on Facebook, uh, you probably saw that I lost a fender off my boat trailer. That nearly punctured my tire. Or, uh, long story. And then uh, I knocked a huge hole in my boat. So, and, and, and what's weird about that deal is I don't even know how it happened. Uh, but this time of year when the water's down on the river, a lot of times I'll just run up on the end of those rock dikes, you know, and, and get out of the boat and mess around trying to catch bait while I've got my lines out the back of the boat, you know, and I just kind of leave. So the only thing I can figure, now when I say that, where the water's at now, I'm not running up on rock. I'm running up on sand that's underneath the rocks, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> I don't want you to think that. Well, I mean, maybe sometimes, but uh, I'm not running up on the rock. You know what I mean? I, I'm running up on soft ground where the waters fell out enough that you can access that soft ground. And then I'm getting out on the sand. You've probably seen it in some of my videos and I'll walk up and down trying to catch some bait uh, while I'm waiting on, to get hit, you know, I, I for my catfish rods to get hit. And how in the world I was able, I managed to knock a hole that size in the hull of a sea arc boat which is, I mean, in my opinion, uh, one of, if not the toughest boat on the market. Uh, definitely one of the toughest boats on the market. I think the War Eagle, uh, they may they may screech them out by just a little bit. Them, some, them seem to be some sturdy built boats. But, uh, man, I don't know. Because you, a lick like that, you think I would know how it happened. But anyway, that uh, kind of a long story behind that. Uh, luckily, didn't sink the boat or anything. Uh, you know, I, I I don't know. I don't know what happened there. But anyway, we got that patched up. Um, yeah, I'm running late this morning. It's almost 10 o'clock right now, but I'm headed to the river. I'm going to get out there and just kind of jump right into this thing and try to get started and catch some fish. It's, of course, after all that, uh, bluebird skies. We had a little cold front come through. The, the pressure's, you know, all out of whack. Yeah, we may not catch a fish. I don't know, but I'm sure going to try. It, it, matter of fact, if I don't catch a fish, you're probably not seeing this video. But if I do catch a fish, you're definitely going to be seeing this video. If I just catch one fish, that's all we need because, you know, that's a fishing video, right? So, uh, and, and I'm desperate at this point, to be honest with you. I, I need a fish in the boat and I need a video that I can post and, uh, and kind of keep my channel relevant. You know what I mean? So, uh, all right, I, I, that's enough jabbering. I'm jabbering on and on and on, but almost to the ramp. We're going to get the boat launched. And we're going to see what happens. I hope y'all stick with me, and uh, let's see if we can catch a few fish. All right, y'all, so we've made it out here. The Mississippi is on the rise, and I made a pretty good run downstream, but it's just like this right here all the way. There, there's trees and chunks and logs. I mean, I ran about 25, 30 miles an hour just to try to be safe about it. And uh, it's bad. So 
what I've done, I've pulled up in the St. Francis here. Uh, it's clean, it's clear. It's probably where I should have went. I just wasn't sure about the ramp that I could put in on. I didn't want to tear up my boat trailer. All right, y'all, I'm gonna put some lines down. Uh, I had a jumping carp jump in the boat while ago. I'm gonna fillet him out and I'm gonna put that whole head down. I know it's post spawn and that's a giant bait or whatever, but uh, hopefully I find a fish here uh, that that is actually a small bait too, if that makes sense. Looking for old big daddy. So uh, I'm gonna drop the whole head down off of that Asian carp. I'm gonna make me some chunks out of that Asian carp and let it be soaking in blood. And I've got some skipjack. I don't know what's gonna happen, terrible conditions, but if you ain't out here, you ain't gonna catch them. I'm gonna get all this stuff going. We'll see what happens. All right, so here's the guy that decided to jump in the boat with me and uh, give us a variety of bait for today. And I'm going to kind of show you, oh, I'm going to kind of show you what I do to use these for bait and I'm going to kind of not because for whatever reason, cutting a fish up on YouTube can get you. Uh, it has got me once before. So, uh, makes zero sense but anyway um, with this one usually I cut I ring the tail cut it off first but this one is so poor I guess they've come just come off spawn or something uh, I'm not gonna bleed it out and all that I don't think I'm just gonna get what I can use what I can uh, plus I'm kind of wanting to get these kind of wanting to get these uh, rods down so let me, let me skip past this or may not have thought I was joking uh, but this is the first bait going down out of the old carp right here which is the headpiece what I'll do I'll just hook it kind of light right there And we'll see what happens. If something grabs this one, it's game on. Now, with that being said, this time of year, post spawn, conditions what they are. I'm not planning on this piece getting hammered today, but I'm gonna put it down to find out. There are a lot of times out here when I'm 100% confident in that bait. I know you look at it, some of you anyway, some of you may be doing the same thing, but I know some of you look at a bait that size and, and just think it's crazy and overkill, but you would be surprised what will happen putting baits like that down. You really would. As far as the rest of it goes, I just kind of fillet it out and I'll make me some chunks. I got a couple of bigger chunks in here. Uh, and then I would usually bleed that dude out in a bucket or in a bag and soak this in there but i think i'll have enough going on that there'll be some, there's enough oil and everything in there but i'm not gonna do it on these i don't want to get that all over the outside of my bag either before i go to the cooler with it now I just set it in the cooler let it chill and then uh get some good free catfish bait so now I've got all my rods down, baited up and dropped. I've only got uh, I've only got four out. I was gonna put out more, but there's brush coming down through here and I don't wanna fight all that. So for now, I'm gonna leave the four down. 85 and a half feet of water, basically. Um, what I'm gonna do is pull up just a little bit, real slow with the trolling motor and get up to this ledge where it drops off because that water you know is bringing my scent down into this hole anyway so we'll draw them from out here and if they're laid up on that ledge we'll pull them from up there so let's turn that down a little now i don't want to move forward too fast and, and get my lines tangled so i'm just going to ease forward here and we'll slowly start shallowing up which the water's running pretty good so you know i've got the trolling motor on four 
it's moving me 0.3 against the current and it looks like it's going to put us where we need to be I don't you know I don't want to get over a half a mile an hour or so because I'm doing two things I'm dragging the blood and the scent out of my bait faster by going that fast and I stand a risk even with 16 ounce weights I stand a risk of everything getting tangled up as I'm moving forward and I'm going to move forward a little bit at a time so I've moved we're about four and a half feet shallower you can see you can see my lines dragging on the bottom now that's what these lines here are you can see that everything's dragging on the bottom now. So now I've got to be careful not to get hung up. 79 feet. We're going to stall out right here for... I'm going to go ahead and spot lock right here. We're going to stall out right here for a few minutes. I may raise everything up. And then I may move forward a little bit. And as I move forward, if I have to, I'll raise my baits up just to keep them right there dancing off the bottom. Uh, but I don't really want them dragging on the bottom when I'm suspending like this. There we go, good fish. There we go, number one in the boat. Try not to talk too loud. I got people over here on the bank. I don't want to think I'm crazy. Man, this dude does not want to open his mouth at all. We got him that time. Got him that time. Look at that. Right in the corner of the mouth. Minotaurhooks.com. Cat Daddy 25. Y'all go get you some of them. we go nice little blue cat get him put back we'll get another one There he goes. Waiting on the next one. So we're gonna have about four opportunities back to back here for a barge bite. I don't know where these dudes are headed, but they coming on with it. There's another one way down there behind that third one. That's the third one. There's another one down there. This is the second one. And this one here. I can feel the wind off of him. He's right here on me. But, uh, 
if a barge bite does exist, it should happen in these next four barges here. We got a fish on right here. Like it's going to maybe be a pretty good one. Looks like the barge bite does exist and my dip net is in the back of the boat the drags pretty loose but he is pulling drag that is on a piece of that asian carp so let's be extra glad he found his way into the boat not a giant fish. I can get him with the grips for sure. But a good fish. And the carp paid off. Oh, come here, Grippy. Any fish on a bad day is a good fish. Any fish, any fish on any day is a good fish, in my opinion. And he is caught. Ah, uh, easy, bud. Mess around and get the old hook in the hand, which we do not want to do. That's another. I gotta be called a fun sizer just because he got my heart rate up it's been too long beautiful fish man look at the color look at the bronze down his back that's a beautiful fish i'm gonna get him back i'm gonna i'm gonna get another piece of carp on there a fresh piece i'm gonna try that one more time i'm gonna get him down let him go back home He gone. Let's get another one. Here we go. This rod right here. Man, I don't know if he hooked up or not. Oh, shoot. Man, that's odd because he hammered it. He hammered it. I jumped the gun, though. Maybe I should have gave him a few minutes. It's still right there in the same spot. We'll see, but usually, you know, that's in 80 feet of water, and usually that won't be a gar. Uh, man, he pulled it down good, and then and just let it go. I don't know what happened there, but we'll see. It's still right there on top of it. Maybe he'll come back and get it. Damn, river's nasty today, ain't it? Nice. Chunks everywhere, man. You can't hardly get away from them. Oh yeah. When I when I first got here, it, right out there on that seam, it was bad. And then after them barges come through, they pushed all that shit up in here on me. And then as it went back out, it went on, you know. Man, only thing. So I'm bad right now. I'll I'll run up on the end of them rock dikes. And you would think I would have felt it a hole like that, but. I don't really know. On I get, but it had a, it had that damn hole, and then it had a, uh, a big old skint spot coming off of that hole going down the back of the boat. So I got up against something sharp. But I really, I don't know. But it was a good one. <laughs> yeah, I know. That picture, I think, yeah. yeah, it was a good one. Oh, JD sold her up. Oh, shit, he made it look good. Luckily, it was right above the water line there. So I don't really know the rhyme or reason for it, but these barges pulled over on the side and are just, I know they're having to churn water to, you know, uh, keep them going backwards, but I don't know, they're giving it to it. And then I was sitting right, right in there. And uh, 
man, that current picked up and they started pulling logs and stuff up in there and I had to, I had to eject. Uh, so we're gonna run up the river, we're gonna run up above the boat ramp that I put in on and uh, set up on one more spot, probably give it an hour or so and then we'll probably call it a day. All right, so I'm sitting here uh, just kind of waiting on that next bite. And uh, I got to thinking I hadn't really mentioned the lithium batteries since I've had a chance to get them out on the water a couple of times. These are the Walmart batteries. The I've got a video back before this one, putting them on the boat. Uh, can't remember the name of them right off, but you can go back and check out that video. Top notch so far, man, I'm telling you. Uh, my spot lock holds better. It picked me up nearly a half a mile an hour on my trolling motor speed. And I can just, you know, like the last time I was out, I was trying to bump and I ran that thing in some heavy current cutting my speed for a long time. And when I got home, the percentage on the batteries was still up, you know, 90 something percent. So uh, I'm impressed so far. They seem to be doing great so far. And then another thing that I wanted to say, I've been seeing these brake sticks uh, for this heavy monofilament line when you're out here and you get hung up, it stretches so bad, you know, but I didn't want to buy one, so I made one. Um, now, I don't know what in the world that is, but I'm not going to smell it or put my finger in it. <laughs> this thing was rolling around under my console. There's no telling what that is. Oh, all right then. Uh, but, but so I made me one. This is this is half inch schedule 40, the gray PVC pipe cap on each end. And then I just wrapped it in some paracord that I had hanging around the house there. So it uh, didn't cost me nothing. I mean, it cost me something. At some point I bought the pipe, but it was just a scrap piece of pipe and caps that I had. And uh, I wrapped it in some gray PVC, uh, wrapped it in some paracord, wrapped the gray PVC. I might as well give up. I feel like it's about time to go home. I've got hot. <laughs> I wrapped the gray PVC with the paracord and um, I used it earlier and man, uh, I was impressed. So if you got some junk like this laying around and can turn it into a brake stick, works pretty good. If you don't know how these work, uh, if you get hung up, you wrap your line around it a couple times and then you can roll it backwards or forwards depending on which way you wrap the line roll it as tight as you can get it and then break it off you're not breaking your rods uh you know you're not not having a strain you're not thumbing on the spool trying to pull and yeah uh, just all that jazz this dude right here will break it off it's much easier so if you got some junk laying around you might want to make you one of these and throw in the boat oh we got a big one I mean buried it. I hope that other camera caught it. And I hope this one's on. He is heavy. This is the one we've been waiting on. This is the one that's gonna make the video. If, <laughs> you know, it's like I say, there's a whole lot of things that gotta happen between right now and getting him in there dipping there. Oh man, I mean, he absolutely buried this rod. Buried. That's what I've been waiting on right there. Man, oh, the last couple days have been so stressful. I'm sitting up here right now uh, editing what's gonna be this video. Oh yeah, oh yeah, good fish. Man, I tell you what, not nearly as big as I thought he was gonna be the way he took that rod down. He must be hungry or must have been hungry. Uh, good fish though, solid fish. I thought he was gonna be a 40, 50 pounder there the way he took that down. Awesome takedown. Oh. Awesome takedown. I wouldn't trade him for a plug nickel right here at the moment. 
<laughs> man that felt good just ah oh, the takedown i i love catching the big fish i love actually putting them in the boat i love i love all that but that initial takedown as long as it's good i'm good that dude got my blood boiling <clears throat> And a, not a bad fish. I'm gonna, I'm gonna set him down here in the shade. I'm gonna get him off of this deck because it's too hot for my bare feet. It's too hot for him. It's kind of the way I look at that. Uh, and I probably look at that wrong because I can probably actually take more on my bare feet than he can take coming out of that water. Uh, I'm gonna grab a grip. I tell you what. This dude wanted to be a movie star. He took that rod down like a grown man. He got some uh, some leeches or some some kind of nasty looking critters all over him. Parasites, leeches, both. And he is tore up from the spawn, whiskers missing, parts of his fin. Our fins are missing. Tail looks good. Tail looks good. Hmm, that usually don't happen with these. Popping off like that. Let's see. Man, I never got a full set on him there. There we go. Let's see. Calm down, sir. I'm gonna put you back in the water if you act right. Now see, I started not to put any rattle rigs out right here because it's flowing pretty good. <clears throat> I always like to have at least one out. There you go. Spin it up and break my leader. There we go. He got it out himself. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, ooh, he's nasty. He stinks. He's slimy. Look at there. Best fish of the day so far. Oh, uh, I don't know. He's He's got a little heft to him. 15, 16 pounds. Something like that. Make sure the chest camera gets him here. I think it did. Oh, oh he's feisty. He's tore all to pieces. It's hot. Let's put him back. Let's put him back. We'll get another one. Appreciate that epic takedown, son. You, oh, you made me think you were about three times your size. Thank you, sir. Nice doing business with you. I'm gonna get baited up. Get back down. See if we can get another one. Well, y'all, no matter how many times I come out here and do this, this is the part that I always hate and always will. It's time for me to call it a day. I'm gonna roll them up. Uh, I appreciate y'all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to hit that like button on this video for me. And another thing, don't forget to ring that notification bell so you'll be notified every time a new video drops because it's not going to be long and the winner of the giveaway of the fishing trip, you know, the, the fishing trip giveaway is coming up here pretty soon. So uh, click that bell. You'll be notified every time a new video comes up and you just might be the one when that new video pops up to win a fishing trip out here with me on the Mississippi River. Like I said, I appreciate y'all watching. I'll see you in the next one.